Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the Aft Deck. Where each week we recap an episode of Bravo's hit reality TV show, Below Deck. It's Below Deck, Down Under, Season 2, Episode 6, and the title says it all, all wrong. In this episode, these lovely guests get to experience Cairns Monsoon in all its glory. We witness a lovely tribute to the primary's late mother, and we don't need to know any more than the title of the ep. Let's get into it. We start with dinner. It's not going well. No, Chef finds out during dinner service that two guests don't like red meat. She's parked, she says. <laughs> <laughs> and she hasn't done enough starters for the dietary requirements that she's now, like, forgotten about. Yes. Aisha is trying to save the situation. She's really helpful here. She's like, Chef, look, don't worry. They don't want the tomahawk, but they're happy with everything else. There's plenty of salads. There'll be plenty of food. Don't worry. The chief stew is always there to buffer the chef's emotions, aren't yes. they? <laughs> they're yes. like that person that's like, it's okay. There's loads of salads. I'm looking going, there's not. There's, there's not actually. She plates up. The food still looks amazing and the guests still love it. So she saved it. The captain heard it all. We should say, actually, that the primary doesn't like the meat medium rare. So he sends it back. He does say as well, um, I think I put on my preference sheet medium. Mm-hmm. And so then our back it goes and she recooks it, replates it on a fresh plate, sends it back down. Laura puts it in front of him. <laughs> I really like this. This is like cracks me up. So he's like, oh, now it's too well done. Send it back. He's like, I'm joking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. So yeah. there's lightheartedness there, which is nice. Yes. Captain is hoping she fixes it for the next charter. I mean, he's said this quite a few times now. He has a lot of faith in her and we talked about why. Because she can own her mistakes. She's good. Like mm. she's, her temperament is great in the yeah. kitchen. She's really good at her job. These mistakes that she's made, yes, this one was quite large. Yeah. But luckily the guests are chill about it. And she has a supportive team in Captain Jason and Aisha. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't get a better team than that because Aisha checks in with her again and she's like, I'm just checking to see if you're okay. Chef's like, yep, I'm good. I fucked up. I'm okay. And now it's time for cake. She's worked on this cake. All day. Yeah, since like I think nine in the morning she's been prepping. And we see them sing happy birthday to the birthday boy. The primary gets up from his seat and just Uh kind of walks behind Uh the birthday guest. And they're like, yeah, would you want some cake? Uh Everyone wants some cake. And he's like shoves his face into this cake. Straight in. Now everyone's laughing. Not the chef. She's like, oh, my hard work. Her face of despair. <laughs> She's just like, oh. And then we see all this back footage of her <laughs> making this cake all day for someone to smash their face in it. But she's happy. So dinner goes off. Dessert finishes. They're back in the kitchen. And Luke again, I've got flashbacks from their first crew night out where he tricked her with the eyelash. Oh, yeah. And he's like... Oh, there's an eyelash here and she closes her eyes and he kisses her without mm-hmm. consent. And again, he's like, oh, there's a hair. on the, mm-hmm. They're both ne- near the cake. And he's like, there's a hair on the cake. There's a hair on the cake. She's like, where? where's the hair on the cake? And he pretends he's going to shove her face in the cake again, like gets his hand on the back of her head and goes to do it. Leave her alone. Like, stop doing that. Stop. And he kisses her on the cheek. Did he? Yes. It's all a diversion tactic. This man has to trick people into situations where he then unconsensually kisses them. Yeah. It's not okay. It's morning. 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 Captain is checking the weather. The wind and the swell is going to double. He's concerned. It's horrible. We've not had good weather in Cairns this week. No, I wonder what time. I'm trying to – do we know when they film? I thought about this. I think it's February, March. Okay. Which is monsoon season. Yeah, it's the worst Cyclone time. too. Yeah, it's hot and it rains every day. So for everyone who's not here and not a Queenslander to understand, Brisbane is where we're located. Our summers can hit 30, 
33 degrees Celsius, 34 degrees. We can go up to 40. Cairns is hot as hell. And humid. Our summer is December, January, February. So if they were filming in that time, they are like... It is not pleasant. You'd want the rain, honestly. Sticky. You'd want it though. Because humid. That's the only thing that breaks that. Exactly. It yeah. builds up all day and then you get this massive storm. It's which like is... all the humor is precipitated. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... <sighs> and welcome to Carla and Lane's Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> Chef does an amazing breakfast. Oh, God, she kills it. They love it. She's making up for last night. She makes a million different types of breakfast. How does she get it out? Like, she's so good. Like, mm. honestly, I know she's No chefs. stress. Yeah. The deck team are coming up with ideas for drinking games. Which, bravo, because what else are you going to do? I would be up for that. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. So, Captain calls Luke and Aisha to the bridge to discuss the weather. Yeah. They have to go in. Yeah. They can't stay out there. It's actually dangerous to be in the middle of the ocean with this weather that's coming in. Who comes up with the plan? Was it Aisha? Not to tell them until they're drunky skunky. (laughs) She's like, let's wait until they've got a few more in them before we break that news. I'm like, very clever. And everyone's on board with that. Yeah. Laura again with the limes. Oh, and Aisha's like, what the fuck? Does her family own a lime orchard? (laughs) Has she got shares in limes? In limes or something? She won't let it go. She is like a dog with a bone Mm. when anything doesn't go her way. The deck crew do a great job of setting up the drinking games. Flip cup. Flip cup. And Aisha goes up to Captain and she's like, okay, Captain, now, 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 tell them now. But they're totally understanding and they get it. There's fist pumps. Yeah, because they were like, yeah, the weather's bad, man. Yeah, like... (laughs) They were probably thinking, how long are we going to stay out here? (laughs) Please, send us home. (laughs) So, yes, they're all happy. It's all good. So night two, the guests want to do a memorial for the primary's mother and the primary's wife asked Serena to make this Cuban dish that her late mother-in-law used to make. The stakes are high. Like she fucked up last night's dinner and so she's like, Oh, fuck. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll make the primary's late mother's perfect Cuban dish. (laughs) So she's, what do you do? Well, even the partner or the wife says, I try, but I feel like I don't do it justice. And then she hands over the baton to the (laughs) chef. She's like, no pressure. Fuck. She Googles it. I would too. Yeah. How else are you supposed to do it? Yeah. It's 3.50. The weather, it's pelting down. Oh. They need to leave. Absolutely. But Serena needs chicken thighs to get this dinner. And they can only be delivered to the dock. They can't get out to the boat in this storm. So the provisions are like, sure, I'll get you chicken thighs, but they'll be at the dock. Yeah. There's thunder. There's lightning. It's a classic Aussie tropical storm. Adam is green. He's not coping well. He's actually getting seasick. For the first time... He forgot to take his tablets. <gasps> That's why. And Aisha is just shot after shot after shot of tequila with the guests. Captain calls Adam to the bridge and says, can you keep a watch while I've got to go do what? I don't know. What he said you? he had to go to the day head. He needed to do a poo lanes. I wrote that he had to go to the day head and I'm like, what? Yeah, and he went to his cabin and did a poo. <laughs> <laughs> so Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> He just had to go curl one out. <laughs> Drop one off at school. <laughs> the turtles popped its head out. <laughs> he was turtlenecking. <laughs> so he goes to the day head, comes back. He's like, oh, thanks. And he's like, you can go. He says, I know he's trying to hide it, but he's turning green right in front of me. He's all shades of green. So they dock at night in bad weather with a seasick decky. It goes well. They dock well. But then did you see Captain Jason looking over the controls in the bridge? No. So they dock and then we've got this shot of Captain. He's looking over the controls. It's like he's doing it by candlelight. It's like a teeny tiny flicker of light. He's looking down like trying to see and I'm like, get some light into that bridge. My God, this boat. Mm. New table, new lights. (laughs) 
Let's just have a list of all the things that we think they need to renovate. <laughs> Who owns this boat? <laughs> yeah. The chicken finally arrived, thankfully. Well, at 6.50, it's one hour and 10 minutes until dinner. She gets her chicken and it's go time. Mm-hmm. She says, step one, Google. Step two, pray. It tastes like his mother's. And step three, go cry in the walk-in. 7.50, <laughs> it's 10 minutes to dinner. They're seated at the table. Dinner isn't ready. It's not too far off, but it's not ready. So yeah. she's kind of like, fuck. She's Can't a bit serve stressed. raw chicken. No. They deliver the food. It's like you, you're kind of like holding your breath. The primary takes. A taste. A bite? A morsel. It's Cuban approved. Perfection. Well done, Sheffy. It's fantastic. And then we move straight into the memorial after dinner. They didn't know this because it wasn't on the preference sheet, but Chef has prepared a cake for the memorial, which is a really lovely touch, and Jason takes it out. It was his mother's favourite cake. Aisha asks him about his mum's passing, and they he says, yep, this means a lot to me. My mum and I were basically homeless. She was my only cheerleader. And he's tearing up, mm. and he says, this is for you, mum. And it's so heartwarming and sweet. And I just thought, how proud would you be as a mother to see your son do that for you? I know. And it's also like it was really touching because it kind of shows it's so hard. Grief is so hard and it never goes away and it doesn't matter how many years pass and especially a parent. Mm. It's just really sad and I'm really happy that he has a loving wife that does those things for him. Yes. So that night all sort of winds up and they go to bed quite early. Here we see though Laura's like pushing herself on Adam. She's giving him a big hug. She's saying she knows that his scent is Calvin Klein and Adam Adam just says to camera, oh that shit is scary. Yeah. He's feeling um, pursued. Yes. I guess. I think that's a perfect if I word. Yeah. pick a word for him that didn't come from his mouth. Um, Captain gives Chef the props for tonight. He's really happy. It's awesome. It was perfect. And we roll right into morning. So it's the final day of charter and it's 8.35. Chef does another amazing breakfast and Laura gets up and she starts complaining to Aisha about last night. She says she's really, really tired. She's really, very very tired. Very tired. If you'd like to support us, go to the link in the show notes and buy us a coffee or subscribe. It's a small donation that goes towards helping us cover the costs to make our podcast. You can tell what she's doing. She's planning a seed. She wants to be on Adam's shift because last night wasn't a long night. She's putting that thought out there like, I'm so tired. I just want to have a different shift. And then she goes in and asks for one charter. Can we change shifts? And Aisha explains that Margot isn't experienced enough for that yet. Laura's not happy, but she walks off. So that's kind of the end of that conversation. But I don't think it's the end of that conversation. Isn't that where Aisha says, you can do it. I've done years of it. It's part of being a yachty. Yes. And it's a fair comment. Aisha's like, I did nights for ages. A whole season she did nights. Mm -hmm. And then we see Laura complaining to Margot a bit later about... Not- Says Aisha's really mean to her. Yeah, because she's not a yachty. And that is not what Aisha said. She didn't say, you're not a yachty. She said, it's part of being a yachty. You can do it. Aisha ends up, they kind of end up in the same area and she says, you know, do you want to chat about it? And Aisha said, you know... You said you were tired. Yeah. And, and Laura was, was like... Deny, deny, deny. I never said that. Production goes back. And shows us the clip. (laughs) And shows the clip. Love that. Same. Aisha says, you literally said you were tired. She tries a different tact and says, I only asked to change for one charter. And Aisha says, look, I told you Margot isn't strong enough on service. And then Laura says, but you could do it. I know. Um, And I think she even says, honey. I'm talking about you, honey. And Aisha says, yeah, it doesn't work that way. I'm chief. I need to be on breakfast, lunch and dinner. And I understand that she said that and I, I'm i a bit like this too. I feel like I have to explain myself all the time. But that's a point where I feel like I wish Aisha, just, Aisha had just said, no, 
I'm your chief. Full stop. <laughs> Respect my decision. Yeah. There's a hierarchy. Aisha never pulls that line. No. She's always very compassionate. She listens and she explains why. If I had to pick, you would pick her every day because she's so great. <laughs> like In every way. All crew change into your whites. It's a great farewell. The guests were nice. He's got two envelopes. <gasps> I've never seen this before. Me neither. So he gives one to the crew and then he says, now to Captain Jason, you're going to earn this one. How's he got to earn it? Arm wrestle. So good. Good old-fashioned arm wrestle. Good Let's see fashion. who's strong. <laughs> now, uh, Captain Jason works out every day too. So He does. This is a fairly even comp. You would think. But the primary wins. Captain Jason's arm looks like it's going to break at one point. I was concerned. I was like, it's twisting. In a way, it shouldn't. I thought the primary had the stronger arm and would have won. It certainly looked thicker. (laughs) And then afterwards, Captain says to camera, well, you know what? I got halfway through and then I realised I can't beat the primary. I've got to let him win. (laughs) They have their tip meeting. And this is an awesome tip, 2,080 US dollars per person. Yep. What do you think that is, Lanes, in Aussie dollars? Stop asking. Give me a guess. I want to guess. 3,200. <gasps> you fucking Googled that. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. Oh, my God. You got it exactly right. <laughs> 3200 per person, that is a lot. And the shiny helmet goes to Adam. He needs to get his sea legs. Everyone's on a high and they get ready for their night out. Adam and Serena go for a cigarette. Serena asks him how he feels about Laura like being all over him and he's like, I'm not enjoying it at all. And he's openly said multiple times, I just want to be friends. Yeah. And this is not the first time he's had this conversation with Chef. This happened the other night, remember? Mm-hmm. So this is now, you know, we're talking days of this behaviour and other people are starting or have clocked it, noticed it and are checking in with Adam to say like, you know, how are you feeling about it? He's like, no, no, I've said no. I've made it very clear. Yeah, and was it this point or was it another point where she's like, well, maybe you're going to have to be really firm and say no. He's like, I did. And then Luke talks to Aisha about his behaviour. He says he was drunk and dumb and thinking with his dick. When is he not? Mm-hmm. But what he was talking about was getting with Laura. Yes. He's he's double downing and saying it wasn't the right decision. He's taking responsibility for it, he says, and I'm like, nah, brah, you're regretting it. <laughs> and he's regretting using Laura to make Margot jealous and because it didn't work, he's regretting that. He's not regretting his behaviour. No. Again, we see Laura coming on hard to Adam. She pushes it and pushes it and pushes it and says to him, what's wrong with you? Yeah. What's wrong with you? And he's like, why? You don't want to just be friends. It's really bad though. Like imagine if this was the other way around. A hundred percent. Like if a male was doing what Laura is doing to Adam, yes. if it was the other way around. She is predatory. Like it's awful actually. Yes. Because how many times does he need to say no? Oh, fuck. He has said no so many times, it's not funny. I agree. It's now 9.30. They're at dinner. Margot is really drunk and she says at the table, I'm really drunk. I'm like blacking out right now. And Harry says, have some water. And she she does. She drinks some water and then... Luke's on the other side of her and, listen, I don't know if he heard her say this or what, but she does say, I'm really drunk. I just need water. And then Luke orders tequila shots. So there's like another round of tequila shots that are unnecessary. There was a lot of tequila shots. Yeah. They all start dancing in the restaurant. It's all happening. Culver's got his helmet on. (laughs) <laughs> why is this? Why is Culver wearing the helmet? I thought I Chef know, had but it. Culver's got the helmet. I <laughs> no, thought Adam, Adam had, had it. it. <laughs> but Culver's got the helmet on. He must love it. He's he's CEO, and so he's got the helmet on. He's like, I don't even know what's happening. Everyone is messy. 
Everyone is dancing. This is where Adam says, this is like junior high. Well, they leave the restaurant. Yep. And Luke takes a plant. Why does he do that? It makes no sense. It's not just a plant. It's about a 10 kilo arrangement. Do we see him take the pot or do we just see him in the van with it? We just see him carrying it out. Like Another... It's theft. <laughs> They're in the cars. Margot is in the back seat with Luke. And then we've got Aisha, Culver and Chef in the next seat. Uh-huh. Aisha turns around and she's looking in the back seat. Margot is virtually unconscious. She's passed out and she's laying in. Her head is resting in Luke's lap. This is when Aisha clocks the way he is looking at her. He's leaning over her and he's staring straight at her, at Margot. And Aisha looks at that and says, that's when she says the comment. No gobbies for you tonight. Yeah. And Luke says, later. As a threat. Yeah. Not like a, oh, well, I might get lucky later. It's a threat. Yeah. Aisha immediately is like, you should not be saying that. Yes. You should not be saying that. Look at how drunk she is. You should be putting her to bed. And Chef says, I agree. So their radar is already up. And as soon as the car stops, Margot says, I want to get out. And he's blocking her yep. from getting out. He says, you should come cuddle with me. Aisha says, how do we get this seat forward? She can see she's trapped in there. He's like, I've got it. And then she says, I'm going to watch her until she's in bed. I need to chaperone her. She gives Luke the plant and says, I'm taking Margot. Luke smashes said plant and Paul Culver is sweeping it up. And what is he muttering to himself? Well, he's like, I'm just going to put this in the bin because I don't want any tyres to be popped. <laughs> But like, he was cleaning up his mess yes. and concerned about other people. And just also, it's their boat. Yes. Anyone walking past is going to know. He's doing the right thing. Yeah. Aisha puts Margot to bed. And Margot, Margot says, all I want to do is go to bed. No, Luke. It's very clear. And Aisha's like, yep, I got you, girl. She puts Margot to bed. She actually says to Margot before this too, she says, look, I want you to go to bed. I don't want any drunkenness to be taken advantage of. I saw the way he looked at you in the car and I'm uncomfortable. I would like to see you put to bed safely. I'm going to go get you water. So there's some hot tub action upstairs and Luke is in the hot tub. He's in his underwear. So he now gets out of the hot tub and goes to his room. He takes off that wet underwear and just puts a towel around himself. So he's naked underneath the towel and he goes into Margot and Laura's room. Laura leaves the room because Laura's in there and he's told to go upstairs. Next thing, the power goes out. Well, I thought what happened there was clever on Aisha's part because he comes into the room and he's like, jacuzzi. And Aisha mm. immediately shuts it down, not by saying, no, get the fuck out. She says, yeah, yeah, okay, you go and get ready and we'll follow you. Yeah, we're just getting changed. Yeah, she gets him immediately out of the room. She tucks her in. She says "Good night." Power goes out. Luke, it's almost like he sees that power outage. I was looking at him. Mm-hmm. The power goes out and he's like, "Aha! Uh-huh. here's my moment. Here's my moment. And that's when I looked at this whole situation and thought, you know what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing because you know that people don't want you in that room. So you're not in a drunken state thinking, I want to go sleep in that room. The power goes out and you're like, I'm in. And also he knows at that point that Aisha's not in there. Yes. Aisha's gone to get water. To, to check, also to check the power stuff. And make noodles. And that's when the power goes out. He 100% is calculating this. Yes. So what does he do? He walks into Margot's bed, throws off the towel, climbs on top of her, and at this moment, thank God, Mm. production steps in. They open the door. You see a cameraman who's filming and you see who I think is the producer walking in going, no, Luke, she's sleeping. We can't let you do that. They're like, get out now, mate. Come on, mate, get out, get out. To which then he goes, he gets off the top of her and just goes 
on the side and starts to pull the doona up. Like, yeah. oh, I'll just go to sleep. I'll be on her. I'll just be beside her and I'll sleep here. He doesn't listen at all. And the producer then goes into the room and tells him, get out. Margot just wants to go to bed. He's like, Margot, are you okay? Mm. This is hard to watch because Margot is completely out of it. So never are you going to get a response from someone who's that drunk that you would get when they were sober. Yes. Ever. So he knows this. So he's like, if I say this to her, like, Margot, are you okay? Then it, she said, yep, I'm okay. So this gives me the green light because I've said, are you okay? He's trying to get consent from a drunk person. Exactly. And drunk people can't give consent. She says, it's sleepy time. And then what does he say? He's like, are you a 10 out of a 10 or a 9 out of 10? What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. I thought about this and I was like, what does that even mean? What is he trying to get from her? Yeah, I was confused by that. Is he trying to say... I need you to tell me you're a 10 out of 10 because that means you are okay and you are like 100% in your working faculties and therefore what I'm doing right now is consensual. Is that what he was trying to do? Possibly. He was trying to make sure that he was covered. Yeah. He was covering his bases to make sure that anything that happened from then on in was okay. The producer tries again mm. and he finally gets he finally gets out. But he he comes down off the top bunk and he tells them to fuck off for a second. Just fuck off for a second. Yeah. He's naked. The lights come on at that yeah. moment. And he slams the door shut. The producers open the door, he slams it again. They open it again. He's angry. Mm-hmm. He is angry now. And as he's coming out angry. Aisha walks down the hallway and sees him coming out of Margot's room naked and Aisha goes straight into her room to check on Margot. To be continued. It's a lot. If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to theafterdeck.pod or send us an email on theafterdeckpod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for upcoming seasons. See you all next week.